Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 24th of October. India-Pakistan signed pact to operationalize cross-border corridor. Afghan Foreign Minister Rabbani resigns from his post. And market Sabaz in Nepal, India, ahead of Hindu festival. And now for all the details. India and Pakistan signed an agreement on the cross-border Kartarpur pilgrimage corridor on Thursday to allow Indian Sikh pilgrims to visit Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib in Pakistan. At least 5,000 pilgrims will be allowed to visit the holy site in Pakistan every day without a visa. India and Pakistan signed an agreement on the cross-border Kartarpur Pilgrim Corridor on Thursday to allow Indian Sikh pilgrims to visit Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib Shrine in Pakistan. Indian and Pakistani officials met at the zero point near the border town of Gurdaspur to ink the Memorandum of Understanding. The signing of the agreement removes a key legal hurdle for the opening of the Kartarpur Corridor which will be inaugurated on the occasion of 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism, in November. The cross-border corridor will connect Dera Baba Nanak Shrine in India to Gurdwara Kartarpur Sahib, just over two miles from the international border in Pakistan's Punjab province. With the signing of the agreement today, we have a formal framework for operationalization of the Kartarpur Sahib corridor. The Indian official maintained that both sides are in agreement over all issues related to Kartarpur Corridor, except for a $20 service charge Pakistan intends to impose on Sikh pilgrims. The pact comes at a time of considerable tension between India and Pakistan, with Islamabad particularly aggrieved over New Delhi's recent move to revoke the special status of Jammu and Kashmir. Moving on. Hundreds of journalists staged a massive protest on Wednesday following a raid conducted by police on the press club in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan administered Kashmir. The protesters condemned the raid in which several journalists were injured and said the attack was unacceptable. Scores of journalists held a massive protest on Wednesday outside the press club in Muzaffarabad city of Pakistan administered Kashmir against police brutality on them. Several journalists were injured on Tuesday night after police baton charged and also used tear gas in a raid as a media briefing was underway at the press club by Kashmiri political activists. The journalists condemned the raid by raising slogans against the security forces and said the attack was unacceptable. The raid on journalists came on the same day when at least two people were killed and several injured after police baton charged on a peaceful crowd in Muzaffarabad gathered to observe Black Day, the day when Pakistani forces invaded the part of Jammu and Kashmir in 1947. And the Political activists have for long blamed that Pakistani security forces operate with impunity in the illegally occupied region and use brute force to muzzle dissent and even on those voicing their basic concerns. And he's from Afghanistan. Afghanistan's Foreign Minister Salahuddin Rabbani has resigned from his post, saying the country's ministry has been sidelined. Rabbani said he will, however, continue to work for and remain in the service of the Afghan people. Afghanistan's Foreign Minister Salahuddin Rabbani resigned from his post, saying the country's ministry has been sidelined. In a resignation letter to President Ashraf Ghani on Wednesday, Rabbani wrote that he is proud of serving as his country's foreign minister under the National Unity Government or NUG over the past five years, but at the same time he faced serious challenges in his role. He said the foreign ministry under the National Unity Government was being treated as a non-government organization and the entire government was exploited. 
Rabani also took to Twitter and said the continued process of state institutions being damaged, undermined and pushed aside in various ways was no longer tolerable. The Afghan National Unity Government was established in June 2014. After a controversial 2014 presidential election, Ashraf Ghani agreed to split the power with Abdullah Abdullah, chief executive of Afghanistan. Agreement between the two parties ended the political deadlock that otherwise would have allowed Afghanistan to the frontier of political collapse. In East from Sri Lanka, a parliamentary report on the Easter Sunday attacks in Sri Lanka has revealed that the Indian High Commission and a hotel frequented by Indians were also among the targets of the bombings in April. The coordinated attacks on three churches and three hotels across the island nation killed more than 250 people. Sri Lankan Parliamentary Select Committee appointed to look into Easter Sunday bombings has said the Indian High Commission was a potential target of the terror attacks in April. The committee, which presented its 272-page final report to the Lankan Parliament on Wednesday, also referred to intelligence input about a hotel where Indians were staying in large numbers as a likely target. The report submitted after recording evidence from nearly 60 persons, including the incumbent President Maithripala Sirisena, has also slammed intelligence agencies, as it said that they were aware of the potential threats by domestic Islamist groups like National Tawheed Jamaat. Testimony received by the Parliamentary Select Committee also indicates to several intelligence agencies being aware of increasing extremism in the country. On April 21, the suicide bombings took place in three churches and three hotels across the island nation, killing around 277 people, including eight suicide bombers, and wounded more than 400 people. Investigators identified Zehran Hashim, the founder of the National Tawheed Jamaat, a domestic Islamist group, as the mastermind behind the execution of the coordinated attacks. More news from Sri Lanka. A two-day annual International Maritime Conference, the Gale Dialogue, was held in Sri Lanka's capital, Colombo, this week. 55 countries participated in the conference aimed at focusing their attention on a greater maritime visibility for enhanced maritime security cooperation. A two-day annual international maritime conference, Gale Dialogue 2019, was held in Sri Lanka's capital Colombo earlier this week, with 55 countries participating to discuss global maritime safety and security. Sri Lanka's Deputy Defence Minister Ruan Vijay Vardhana during the conference said that maritime stakeholders must focus their attention on a greater maritime visibility for enhanced maritime security cooperation with friendly nations. The Navy in a statement said the purpose of the Gale Dialogue was to provide a common platform for stakeholders of national and international repute to discuss and deliberate maritime-related issues. The Gale Dialogue was first held in 2010 with the participation of a number of international and local professionals representing maritime fraternity. Preparations are in full swing across Nepal and India ahead of the Hindu Festival of Lights. Markets in both the countries are abuzz with scores of people flocking daily to buy items for decoration and religious rituals. Markets in Nepal are abuzz with the arrival of the country's second biggest festival, Tihar. Asan Bazaar, one of the oldest marketplaces in Nepal's capital, Kathmandu, has been flogged by shoppers as people prepare to celebrate the festival that shows reverence to elders and gods. As Tihar is regarded as the festival of lights and decorations, the shopkeepers have brought in varieties of decorative and light materials to the market. Meanwhile, in parts of neighboring India, potters and artisans are busy preparing traditional earthen lamps as people across the country gear up to celebrate Diwali, the festival of lights. Devotees decorate their homes with lit lamps and flowers during the festival. They also distribute sweets and exchange gifts with their friends on the occasion.
दूर से हमारे पास गिराक आ रहा डिजाइन जितना लगाएंगे तो उतना गिराक हमारे पास आ रहा दूर दूर से गिराक आके लेके जा रहा The festival of lights celebrated by Hindus both in India and Nepal marks the return of Hindu lord drama to Ayodhya his birthplace after defeating Ravana the powerful demon king of Lanka The festival is also celebrated in honor of Lakshmi the Hindu goddess of wealth and prosperity Favorable weather conditions this year have helped farmers to boost the production of almonds in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir The trees are loaded with the bumper crop and the farmers and the dealers both are anticipating high profits. Almond growers and dealers in India's northern Jammu and Kashmir are rejoicing over bumper production this year and are anticipating rich profits. The almonds of Kashmir Valley are widely known for the superior quality and taste and are in great demand everywhere in the markets. According to the farmers the almond production this year has increased as compared to last year due to favorable weather conditions a horticulture official said this year almond production has remained about 10000 metric tons in kashmir valley is saal to fasal badhiya hai kyunki do teen saal se log jo hai na jo dawai wawai isme laga rahe hain usme badi mehnat ho rahi hai तो खाद वाद भी लगा रहे हैं उसकी वजह से यहाँ का जो बादाम का फसल है इस साल वो बढ़िया निकला है सबसे बढ़िया निकला है कि क्योंकि हर किसी के पास यहाँ पे बादाम की फसल बहुत ही अच्छी है तो कि... जब इसमें ब्लूमिंग स्टेज पे हमें सनशाइन अवर्स काफ़ी अच्छे मिलने चाहिए और दूसरा इसमें ज़्यादा बारिशें ब्लूमिंग स्टेज पर ना हो हमने देखा कि इस साल भी इसके लिए एक अच्छा माहौल रहा अच्छा क्लाइमेट रहा आलमांड के खातिर तो इस साल भी हमारी जो प्रोडक्शन बहुत अच्छी रही है ये करीब करीब दस हज़ार मैट्रिक टन के करीब हमारी इस साल की प्रोडक्शन रही है आमंस फ्राम द कश्मीर वैली आर सप्लाइड अक्रॉस वेरियस पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया The cool and dry climate of Kashmir is also suitable for fruits like strawberries, apples, cherries, plums, grapes and walnuts which require moderate rainfall and bright sunshine. The United States Institute of Peace organized a two-day youth conversation with Tibetan spiritual leader the 14th Dalai Lama in his abode, the Indian hill town of Dharamshala. The Dalai Lama interacted with 28 youth peace builders from 12 conflict-torn nations during the dialogue that began on Wednesday. Tibetan spiritual leader the Dalai Lama interacted with 28 youth peace builders from 12 conflict-torn nations on Wednesday in his abode the Indian hill town of Dharamsala. The United States Institute of Peace or USIP organized the two-day youth conversation with the Dalai Lama to strengthen the abilities of youth leaders to build peace in the world's most violent regions. The fourth annual dialogue commenced on Wednesday with youth peace builders drawn from countries across Africa, the Middle East and Asia. The 28 participants were a part of an exchange program where leaders of the next generation learn about peacekeeping methods and tools of resilience in other countries. We've brought youth leaders from conflict affected communities to meet with his holiness for an exchange in which they learn from they share their experiences doing the work of building peace in their communities and learning from him uh tools uh to build their resi- resilience and inner peace so that they can further their work. I've learned a lot about leadership, about transformation, and about positive thinking. In fact, about self-awareness. I've learned how to tolerate one another. I've learned how to share my my experience with others and how to be compassionate with others. The Dalai Lama remarked strongly on the increasing use of violence and advocated for a greater role of youth and education in the transformation towards peace. He also reiterated his conviction that education is the key to changing people's way of thinking. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India